Hi, I am the co-host of the Joe Flynn Show, Priscilla, and I am here with Ed Martinez, and he is going to explain to me the props we have presented in front of us and what movies they're from. Well, this gentleman is from this particular film. It's called The Dead Pit. It was my first zombie horror film that I ever did as a special effects director. And believe it or not, this is 20 years old. This, this head is 20 years old, this film is 20 years old. And here's a shot of, similar shot. This is the actor in the makeup with the white contact lenses. And this is a prop head from the meltdown sequence at the end of the film, where his eyes turn white with contact lenses. And this is part of a multi-stage meltdown sequence, where eventually this character goes all the way from being a full-grown man down to a puddle on the floor of liquid. Nice. <laughs> nice. So that's Dr. So this was This was your first zombie. Right. So first, first feature length 35 millimeter zombie film shot right here in the San Jose area. Nice. And Santa Cruz and Milpitas. And nice. Now you mentioned. For all you locals out there. Exactly. <laughs> Our audience. Not too many local films. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many films made locally. That's. that's yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned to Joe when Joe was kind of getting a background on you for our audience here. Um, what was one of the first things that you would say you genuinely created? Um, well, when I was young, I used to do a lot of stop motion animation with clay, you know, claymation dinosaurs. And I'm a big fan of Ray Harryhausen and the King Kong, the original black and white King Kong that Willis O'Brien did. You know, he's one of my favorites. And then, of course, um, I started doing a lot of Star Trek recreation and Star Wars recreation costumes as I got older and started going to conventions and things. And, of course, I started when I was really young wanting to be a comic book artist. So I used to draw a lot of superheroes and big muscle bound monsters and things like that as well but uh, you know my first creations were probably those kind of amateur films that you make in your backyard where you build you know miniature buildings and stomp all over them like Godzilla or blow up model airplanes and model tanks with firecrackers and things like that and try and make it look like the the old Godzilla movies or you know King Kong destroying the railway car and biting people and all that kind of stuff you know so that was probably the first kind of stuff I created you know I, I used to do haunted houses when I was really young you know junior high school age Age and elementary, even as young as fourth and fifth grade, I was doing haunted houses and stuff. Wow, wow, nice. <laughs> and a lot of years of different types of effects. Yeah, nice, yeah, I've gone nice. from making, you know, early films like that all the way to my professional years now, you know, where I've done some of these are, are you know, feature films, like this is one of the Amityville series of films, and this was actually the sixth Amityville film, not the remake that has been done recently, but I was the special effects director on this as well, and I worked with a lot of people in Hollywood on this particular one. This one was done with a, a good friend of mine, Jeremy Aiello, who's been working at KMV a lot. He, he did Grindhouse and and, uh, the Cat in the Hat, and you know, he's, he's worked on many big Hollywood films. And he was sort of uh, my young you know, trainee and apprentice sort of on some of the early films like this particular one and, and some of these others you know, that I did the special effects for. I was the special effects director, and I would have a crew of maybe 12, 10 you know, people working under me. Now, explain to me who Brittany is. Okay, yeah, this is from a film called Greeley's Field, and Here's the video box for that. And this actually, uh, we met Joe uh, up at uh, Modesto for the uh, Shocker Fest Film Festival. And a gentleman by the name of George Baker, which I believe you had on the show before and did an interview with at the Fangory Weekend of Horrors, which I was also there. And this head was made for that film. This girl, this young lady is named Brittany Lance. And I understand she's gone on to be in other films since this one. Here, I'll let you hold her. And um, she was a victim in the film. There's the, basically the story involves uh, two couples that go off on a drive to go on a camping trip in the woods at, near a lake. And during the course of the film, some murders happen, and she's one of the first murders. She gets literally chopped up into pieces. We made legs and arms and a torso and her severed head and all the parts of her body are found in the trunk of the car when they discover her dead body. Nice, so nice. So this, this was actually made with a whole technique using what they call life casting. 
And first, you know, I actually body mold her her entire body, a, a new body mold. My girlfriend Nina and I, you know, we had to go to a special uh, appointment in a hotel where we met, you know, her for the first time. We had never met her before. We had a production meeting. And then, you know, about an hour after we met her and took her a few photographs, we took her up to the hotel room and she disrobed and we completely molded her body in the hotel room so that we could create these severed body parts. That's the way you have to do it. I'm sorry, folks. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what would you say was your most challenging mm. makeup effect to do? I, I would probably say that even to date, you know, this has been probably my most challenging makeup effect to do because this film, I was in my early 20s. This was my very first feature film. There was a lot of pressure on. I mean, there was about 150 zombie extras that needed to be made up. Almost every single time we did zombies, we had 70, we have 60, we have a 100, you know, in a single night. And also the meltdowns. There were multiple meltdowns in this film. And I had never done a meltdown before in my life. But I was young and I was ambitious and I, I thought that I could do it and I, I knew I could pull it off if I just was given a chance, you know, so I convinced the filmmakers to hire me and to let me do these meltdowns, but when I first read the script, there was about 10 or 15 meltdowns in the film, and then there was no way that they could afford that with their budget. So we negotiated and I told them, look, why don't we make it like three meltdowns? We'll put one toward the beginning, one in the middle, and one really spectacular one at the end for the lead villain, which this is part of that meltdown. And when we made the film, there was a, a series of makeups that I did, you know, for the, the lead villain character. And this is a 20-year-old foam latex appliance that I have here. And this was part of the, the meltdown sequence where tubes were placed inside the foam appliances. You can see the channels in the back of the piece that are set up so that you can lay the foam down on top of the tubing that goes on top of the actor's face like that. And that's so that when, when the actor is wearing this, and this is also the neck piece that goes on with it, and these pieces with a few more pieces together make up this one makeup that I did for part of this meltdown sequence that was eventually cut from the film. And now we're getting ready to release the Dead Pit on DVD in the United States. This particular DVD box is actually from a foreign release DVD. This is the German and Dutch and Polish and you know foreign language version. It's got two, there's a button inside where you can push, push the button and you can listen to it in American or in English or you can listen to it in the Dutch or German you know version. And um, this is technically the uncut DVD, the only DVD that's available at this time is this particular one, but very soon uh, a company called Code Red DVD is going to be producing